Well, good afternoon to you. <clears throat> a bit earlier day. Um, stay alert, stay safe. We're coming on, we're coming on. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Won't drop rain, mind, for the tedas and everything else that we got around here. But anyhow, this is a little story day by Liz Harmon. I was putting the tedas around the joint to roast. Rich, be rich bit of beef it was when the grandchild come in to see us. That smells some lovely grand, she said. What is it you're cooking? Oh, a lovely bit of brisket, I told her. I defined that a bit of good brisket, cooked slow, got some lovely flavour. Alfred did dearly love it. We never had beef brand, she resigned. All we have is chicken, chicken and chicken. Mum says that chicken is healthy and some lot cheaper than meat. You ought never to complain, I told her. When your granda and me were children, we only saw chicken once a year. Christmas time. We couldn't afford another time. It was so dear. Here, make yourself a cup of coffee and sit down. And I'll tell you about a certain chicken we had when I was young. When she sat down by the table with a piece of heavy cake and a packet of chocolate biscuits to go with her coffee, she got some good appetite, I thought. Tick after her granda, I reckon. I told her now, when I was a child, there was some time when I was a bit delicate. You, delicate, Gran. I got a job to believe that. Yes, well, there was one year when I went down poorly with everything. You see, in our young days, there were no Jacksons for all the children complaints like measles, mumps, scarlet fever, and I had them one after another. I reckon I was off school for three months or more, and I was brain wished. The doctor told my mother that I needed building up, and she ought to try to tempt my appetite with nourishing food like chicken and brand's essence of beef. Where he thought my mother was going to get chicken from, I don't know. My dad hadn't been able to go to sea for nearly a month, and times was hard. Then my granddad come up from down along and said that he'd heard how some farmer up Chanel was getting rid of his chickens, and that he was selling them off for half a crown each. Then my grandfather said to my dad, Here, boy, here's the money. You go up to Chanel and get one of them for the dear child. Now, Chanel, from where we lived, was over two miles away, and there were no buses that he could catch up there. But off he went, stanking up the hill. It must have been quite late by the time he got home, after walking over four miles there and back. Now, I remember my mother telling me this story, because she said that when my dad took the chicken out of the bag, not only did it have feathers on, but it was alive. She said that she screeched out and told he have to take it back again, as she couldn't bear the sight or thought of eating anything that she'd looked at in the face and eyes. Poor Feather, what a predicament. He didn't relish the idea of walking another four or five miles that night, but my mother was adamant. Bag he had to go. Why didn't he refuse the living chicken in the first place, asked the grandchild. He couldn't do that, I answered. He had to do what he's told, like a good husband should. He was sent to get a chicken, and a chicken he had to bring home. Well, my dad set off again to take the chicken back, but by now it was getting dark. As he set off along the street, he noticed a light on the shoemakers. That the shoemaker was still working, and he called out to my father when he saw him pass the window. Father went in and told Mr. Williams all the story, and said he'd, that, that Dad didn't want to go all the way back up Cheyenne That he needn't mind, if he didn't mind wringing the neck of the chicken, how he'd done it, drawed up with poultry, and he'd done killed scores. So that's what he'd done. Now they had to pluck the bird and clean him. Then, think of a story that was satisfied my mother. Mr. Williams brushed a bit of dirt off his cobbler's bench and together they did the necessary. Mr. Williams even found the greaseproof pepper that had been round his sandwiches and his dinner to wrap him in. Now they had to wait long enough for it, seems as Dad had walked back to Cheyenne Island back. And the story that they had made up was that when my father took the chicken back to the farm, he was going to say that, w that when the farmer's wife heard about mother and the live chicken and how she couldn't handle it they and that it was for me because I was so wished and was in need of nourishing food, she was supposed to be so sympathetic that she took the chicken back and gave Da one that was she'd already cleaned for their own dinner next day. Do you know, my mother believed that tale, that is, until she took her shoes around to be tapped a couple of days later 
when she looked around the shoemaker's shop, she could see a lot of feathers all around. And the saying is, if you see shells, guess eggs. Applied to, if you see feathers, guess chicken. She soon had a true story out of the shoemaker and my dad. But then it was too late to do anything about it because the chicken had been eaten and gone past chicken place. Now that didn't stop my father getting tongue pie. I reckon you know we women are cleverer than men. If we had to make up a tale like that, we would have paid more attention to detail and cleaned up proper so there was no chance of being found out. You know, I reckon there was only one time in my life I ever had chicken other than, than that, that at Christmas. Now, my queen, I asked her, are we going to have a bit of roast beef with me? There's plenty, or are we going home to have chicken? Do you know, Gran, said she, after that story, I think I'm going to become a vegetarian. Thank you very much.